Hey, it's Joe here. Episode 96 has just dropped. One of my favorite Carl Jung quotes of all time is, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. This episode is all about making unconscious decision-making strategies conscious so it can empower us in the direction that we want to head in. Look forward to your comments and thoughts. Bye for now. Hey everyone, it's Joe Parner here. Welcome to episode 96 of Insights. And this episode is actually an extension of episode 95. This is part two. Uh, In episode 95, of course, we explored, and and by the way, if you haven't had a chance to listen to that yet, you might want to listen to that before you continue on in this part, although it's not a deal breaker, but it would certainly uh, probably add even more value to this session if you were to listen to episode 95 first. So uh, in that previous episode, uh, we of course spoke about Uh, The one thing that matters more than time uh, management and money management, and that's energy management, management of our energy. And I introduced you to the four macro fundamental energetic profiles or the four types of energies that exist uh, across the planet. And we're going to extend that conversation um, by going, and and what we did in that that episode 95, of course, is we explored uh, some of the energetic wiring or the energetic patterns of each of the four types. Of course, the four types we discussed briefly in episode 95 were the DISC energy types, which I'm going to go deeper into that right now. Because what we're going to do in this part two and this extension of episode 95, um, in this episode, which is episode 96, we're going to uh, have a closer look at how it is that each of the energy types make decisions because our decisions also impact our energy. Our decisions also impact the level of inspiration or lack of inspiration or motivation or interest in anything. Uh, Our decision-making absolutely has a massive impact, of course, on uh, our future timeline and how we experience, you know, the path moving forward. So first of all, I I just want to uh, share with you, because I'm a as, as many of you know, I'm a big fan of language. I, I'm often curious to know where certain words come from, where do they originate. And what's fascinating is the word decide actually originates from the 1300s. And the word decide means to cut off because the suffix C-I-D-E in decide means to, actually means to kill off. If you think of words like homicide, which obviously means to kill or murder, right? Insecticide is to kill. Pesticide is to kill. So decide means to, well, to kill, but it means to cut off. But to cut off from what? And to me, decide, when you make a decision about something, it's like we're cutting off from the past. We're no longer living in the shadows and echoes of our historical narrative. And instead, what we're doing is we're making a decision, you know, to carve a new path forward, whatever that might be. This can happen on a micro and macro level. I mean, I'm going to say something quite ridiculous here now and say, well, it could be like you're making a decision in terms of a new meal you're going to try in a in a restaurant that you know well, for example. So that's that's carving a new path forward in the experience of having a meal, for example. That's on a micro level. Then there's more significant decisions in terms of, you know, where we're going to live and how we're going to live and what house uh, or, you know, place that we're going to buy or rent or whatever, you know, these, you know, who we marry, you know, where are we having children? All these macro decisions that, of course, impact the way we experience everything. Now, what's this conversation about decision making got to do with uh, energetic profiling or DISC? A, a lot. Because now, what I want to share with you is that each of the energy styles of DISC have their own default. Um, unconscious decision-making strategy. And not many people know these. So what I'm going to introduce you to uh, what are called convincer, uh, convincer strategy patterns. So we're going to explore these even more deeply. And I'll mention this at the end again, at the end of our episode here today. And I mentioned this also in episode 95. And of course, coming up on March 22, 23 is a free public event online on Zoom called Introduction to eDisc. It's a free intro to eDisc, which is a, uh, a wonderful, like a very deep exploration of behavioral profiling and energetic profiling, um, which we explore over the course of a day and a half. So I'll mention it again at the end of this and I'll, and I'll share with you where you can register for that if you're curious to know more. So when we look at D-Energy, so D-Energy of course stands for dominant. And we covered briefly what that meant in episode 95 
Uh, D for dominant, of course, is the outcome-focused, goal-orientated, fact-focused individual. And uh, they have a decision-making strategy, like all the other, all, the, all four types have, have their own unique decision-making strategy. These decision-making strategies, by the way, are not by choice. It's like, it's just something that's wired within this particular personality. Like all four of them have got their own particular personality, sorry, their own particular decision-making strategies. The D energy has what's called an automatic convincer strategy with outcome-based criteria. Now that's a mouthful. Let me say that again and I'll explain it more, more, more clearly. So D energy is what is known as a automatic convincer with outcome-based criteria. So what that means is because they're so goal-orientated, outcome-focused, fact-orientated, they're into efficiency and effectiveness and, and uh, really contextualize most things in their lives in how it relates to where they're going, how it relates to their goals, how it relates to their mission, purpose, outcome, right? is that when they're making a decision, they're out, they've got an outcome-based criteria. So if they're, I'll, I'll just make this up as an example. If, uh, if they're buying, I don't know, a new laptop, right? The decision is made quickly if their outcome-based criteria, whatever that criteria would be, and believe you me, a D Energy would have criteria for what is needed in a new laptop or in a new car or in a new home or in a new set of golf clubs or whatever it might be. They've got an outcome-based criteria. And if that outcome-based criteria is met straight up in the first five or 10 minutes, once that outcome criteria has been clearly met, they make the decision automatically, quickly, right on the spot. In fact, the D energy out of all four energies is the fastest decision maker out of all four by a mile. And then this follows up with I energy which stands for influence, of course, and we explore this a little bit more thoroughly in episode 95. So I energy has got a decision-making strategy that is similar, has overlap with D energy, and then there's a difference. So the I energy is an automatic convincer with connection-based criteria, with connection-based criteria. So they are fast decision-makers too, but they're not basing their decision on how it affects their goal or their outcome or where they're going. They are heavily influenced in their decision-making based on who they get to connect with, who they get to share the experience with, who it is that this impacts, who it is that they're going to get to, um, you know, establish a new relationship with or an ongoing relationship with, who is going to be involved in this decision, if that makes sense. So they are what is known as, uh, and I'm bringing in another dimension of human behavior here, but an eye energy is a, is a kinesthetic decision maker. They are a feeler. So, and, and, a, and a D energy, by the way, is more of a visual based decision maker. So when they're making a decision based on automatic criteria, sorry, automatic convincer strategy with an outcome based criteria, there's no coincidence in the fact that because they're so outcome goal orientated in their psychology, that they also happen to be visual people. So, you know, seeing the vision, you know, visualizing where they're going, you know, is one way of explaining that. So, so a visual, you know, what do they say? A picture is worth, a thousand words. So that's another reason why D energies are so fast in their decision making. The reason why I energies aren't quite as fast as D energies is because they're kinesthetically based or they're more emotionally based, feeling based. And feelings can take a little bit longer to process than a visual snapshot or something. So even though an I energy is an automatic convincer with criteria that's connection based, uh, that they are reasonably quick decision makers but not as fast as the D energies because they, they, they have that kinesthetic component. So in other words, to give you an example, um, an I energy might base a decision on, say, if I'm buying a book, I'm in a bookstore and I'm, a, and I'm an I energy. And there are, say, testimonials in the front cover of the book or the inside cover of the book. If who is making those testimonies about the author is someone that I like or am impressed with or I admire, I will buy the book based on that testimony from that particular person, right? Whereas the DNG is not going to buy the book based on that criteria. The DNG will buy the book based on how can this book help me get to, to one of my goals? And if, if they can see that it can, they buy it straight away. Whereas an ING doesn't make that decision on the book, the ING makes a decision based on who else digs this book, who else has said that this book is really cool, who else has spoken very highly of this author. Does that make sense? It's a, it's a completely different decision-making strategy. And then we have the S energies. 
the S energies uh, now we're starting to go into the detail orientated part of the quadrant. Of course, the quadrant's made up of four parts, D, I, S, C. As we start to go to the left-hand side of the quadrant model, going to the S energies, we start going into the land of detail. And the S energy has got a very different decision-making strategy. Their decision-making strategy is what is known as a period of time convincer. So they are also deeply kinesthetic, just like the I energy, except the difference is that the I energy is very big picture and doesn't get caught up in detail. In fact, their eyes glaze over at the thought of detail, whereas the S energy uh, really digs the, 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 the detail of the nitty gritty. And they are a period of time convincer. So let's, if we go back to, so what does that actually mean, right? So if we, if we go back to the example of buying a book, they might see this book, they grab the book, they start flicking the book, they read bits and pieces of it, they'll even sit down with that book for maybe, who knows, 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, reading different parts of it, right? And they'll uh, enjoy the kinesthetic experience of holding the book and sitting down on a chair, feeling the chair as they're reading different bits and pieces of this book. And guess what? They are unlikely to buy it in that first instant. More than likely on the balance of probability, they'll put the book back on the shelf and then take some time to reflect kinesthetically whether they should buy the book moving forward. Now, sometimes what they'll do is they might take some time in just wandering around the shop before circling back to that book, or they might just come back next week and buy it. Is that making sense? So they are a period of time convincer. And S energies with their decision-making strategy uh, have often been guilty of turning the D and I energies into crazy people because <laughs> the Ds and the Is don't understand why you need to take so much time with all decision-making. So because it's a reflective, detail-orientated, kinesthetic process that the S energy has to go through to arrive at that decision. I hope that's making sense. And then we've got the other part of the detailed part of the quadrant, which of course is the C energy. C stands for compliant. In case I didn't mention it, S stands for stability. C stands for compliant. So the C energy, of course, is the analytical type thinker. And they've got a completely different decision-making strategy. Now, what's similar between the C energy and the D energy is that they're both outcome focused, but the massive difference is that C energy is incredibly detail orientated and very linear in their thinking. Whereas the D energy is more big picture, of course, and not so linear necessarily in their thinking. They can, you know, miss not, not when I say missteps, not in not um, uh, missteps in terms of unintentionally, but they can skip through steps pretty quickly. So the C energy, their decision making criteria is they're known as number of times convincers, number of times and. Typically, those number of times vary in the range of between three and five. So what does that actually mean? It means that they need, need at least three touch points or three meetings or three, um, we'll, we'll go back to the book example. So the CNG will pick up a book uh, that they'll, they'll flick through, they'll read bits and pieces, they might get caught up in reading a certain part of the book or a certain chapter, they're detail orientated. They'll sit down and take their, they take their time like the S energy in reading the book, but they won't necessarily buy it in the first um, discovery of that book. They might have to circle around the shop a number of times. They might need to go and pick up other books of us uh, that are related to that topic uh, in order to make a decision about which one is best for them. So they will need at least two or three touch points, four touch points, five touch points sometimes. And this makes them the slowest decision maker out of all four. But let me tell you that they are the most thorough of all of the decision makers of all four. They are brilliant at gathering all of the accurate, relevant facts to whether it's purchasing a book or all the way through to, you know, uh, buying a house, which is, of course, a whole different deal. Um, and they are very, very thorough. And their logic sometimes can drive the other side of the quadrant a bit nuts because it just takes longer and they're going through inordinate levels of detail. And, and this of course has its, uh, has its place, like all of these decision-making strategies have their own place. So they are a number of times convincer. So uh, what you'll find is that uh, most of us in our behavioral profiles, most of us are a combination of two of these four energies. Some people are three, no one is all four, and less than 1% of the Australian population is dominant in only one of these energies, right? 
So chances are in the balance of probability that uh, you and I, well, I know I am, I'm a combination of IS, chances are that you'll have a combination of at least two of these energy types. So how does that work when it comes to these decision-making strategies? Well, the way that it works is that your primary energy, your what I call your captain energy, which is the one that's more dominant than your secondary one, that's going to be the one that influences your decision making the most. So for example, I'm an IS energy. So I tend to lead with decision making strategies that are automatic based on connection based criteria, right? But I also have found that if I'm making a more significant purchase, like when we bought our new home, uh, well, actually, I was going to say, when it comes to bigger purchases, uh, I tend to use S energy strategy, which is period of time convincer. But um, that doesn't seem to be true in the last four purchases I've made of real estate. So <laughs> they've been pretty quick. So because it's been connection to the community, connection to the area, connection to the vibe of what the property is, and the decision has been made on that. I mean, obviously, I'm not a real estate uh, advisor here. But uh, anyway, that's just that's, that's how I've made decisions in the past around many different things. So so your primary energetic driver will determine and influence how you make those decisions. It's fascinating. And there are many layers to this. Uh, so as I was saying earlier, on March 22, March 23, there's a whole day and a half we're running. It, I only deliver this training three, sometimes four times a year. It's called Free Intro to eDisc. It's on Zoom. The way to register for it is all you need to do is just go to joeparnet.com.au. You'll see it there on the front page. It's pretty obvious. You click the link and it's pretty straightforward. You just enter your details. And it's 10 till 5 Melbourne, Sydney time. Or it might be 10 till 6, I can't recall. On, on Friday, March 22. And then Saturday morning from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Melbourne, Sydney time. Uh, we continue. And, and for those of you then who come along to this training and then want to go further into full accreditation, if you want to become accredited in the instrument, uh, you can do so in April. So this, this day and a half is just a really solid, detailed, thorough taster of what eDisc is all about. And you'll certainly walk away with immense value just from this day and a half. So can't wait to deliver this training uh, as it's a very popular uh, free event that I deliver as I said, you know, three or four times a year. So for, if you're looking to come along, look forward to connecting with you on March 22nd. And, uh, and as I said, to register, all you need to do is go to joeparnet.com.au and you'll see it down the front page. So thanks for tuning in. I hope you got something from this. Uh, a lot of the time when I teach these convincer strategies, uh, these decision-making strategies, it's eye-opening because it's something that is not, you know, um, regular everyday information. So, and if you really loved these insights here today, you'll absolutely adore so many of the insights we've got on March 22 and 23. All right. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. And I look forward to reconnecting with you in the next episode. Bye for now.